Hi there, myself Rakesh and welcome back to my channel. In this specific video, we are going to learn about UiPath Maestro and we are going to build a simpler process and we are going to deploy it in orchestrator. So building in Maestro and deploying a simple process in orchestrator is what we are going to learn. The very first step you have to do, log into UiPath Automation Cloud, meaning cloud.uipath.com. After you have logged in to cloud.uipad.com, click on this breadcrumb symbol. And then you would find something called Maestro. Click on this Maestro. This is the home page of Maestro. In this one, you would find Start Modeling. Click on the Start Modeling and wait for few seconds for the studio web to appear. You might see an autopilot pop-up might appear for you. Simply close it at the moment. This is the canvas on which we are going to design our very first maestro process or a simple process. For this, what we can do, we can go to the left hand side panel and you would find something called Project Explorer. Let's click on the Project Explorer. And here, let's rename the process to my first maestro project. My first maestro project and click on this check mark. Similar way for this BPM also you need to rename because we need to understand which BPM and process are you using. Rename this. And here I'm going to say my first maestro. Okay. And I'm going to click on it. So this will have a dot BPMN means this diagram. This diagram is called BPMN. If you are not aware of BPMN, I would highly recommend you to first watch my BPMN playlist. All right. So now I'm going to minimize this explorer by clicking on this. Now I have the canvas. I'm going to slightly increase the font. Hope that is visible. Now here in the start event, this is the start event. Again, the autopilot is appearing time to time. I'm closing it. I will select this and click on this annotation symbol, text annotation. Okay. And in the text annotation, I will write something. I will say, ask user the path. Ask user the path. What is this example? You'll get to know. All you do at the moment, just follow and do this what I'm doing. Simply add an annotation, ask user the path. Okay. Now, once you have done this, this is the start event. Click on the start event once again. And then click on the intermediate event, which has a double circle. Click on this intermediate event. Again, highlight the intermediate event. Click on the change element. And here I am going to select the timer event. There will be something called timer. Do you see this one? Timer. Timer intermediate catch event. Select this. So, so far what we have done, we have got the start event. We have written an annotation using this. And then I am putting an intermediate event. I had put an intermediate event and selected the timer event by hitting on change element and selected the timer event right if you don't get it simply you can type it timer so timer is already used that's why it's not coming so you can see this is what you have to do so far and here once you have this timer event the next thing what we will do we will use a in the timer event in the properties right look at the properties if you highlight the property panel will appear in the property panel what you do here in the type select duration how much time you have to wait for and here in the values click on this expression editor okay and in the expression editor here in the seconds i'm going to use five seconds all right and hit enter and the value would change something like pt5s means five seconds this is how it will appear. So don't worry. So you have got this PT5S. Fine. 
So you have given a duration. Now here let's write some annotation. Delay of five seconds. I'm giving some delay of five seconds. So you can say five seconds delay, whatever you feel like. Okay, let's do that. Five seconds delay. Fine. After the timer event, select the timer event once again and then use a exclusive gateway. What is exclusive gateway? If all these questions are coming, that means you might have not watched my BPMN video. Please do watch it because these terminologies are important. And you understanding BPMN is also important if you want to work on Maestro. Anyways, assuming you know it, I'm going to click on the exclusive gateway. In the exclusive gateway, I would select and then select a task one. And I will again select and I'll put another task. So this is the I will name it double click and name it as task A. Double click the second box and name it as task B. Select the task one and use the dark or thick circled black line. This is for the end event. Okay. So here I will double click again and say end A. Again for the task B, I will select and select the end event. And I'm going to say end B. Okay when to use this thin circle when to use this thick circle is also a rule which i have to taught in the bpmn playlist all right so now your diagram is created is it functional not yet we have to do so many things let's get started what i will do let's click on the start event in the start event if you click on it you see a property and by default this action this arguments all would be blank at the moment. What you have to do after highlighting the start event, you have to click on add a new under the arguments. Not in the output, under the arguments, you have to simply click on add new. And here we are going to create a variable. It's saying add variable. So you are going to create a variable. Whatever you are going to type, it's going to be a variable. So let's create a variable called path. So I would be asking the user, which path would you like to take? Path A or path B? It's a simple process to understand how the conceptually how Maestro works. So I'm using a variable. You can name anything, but I would say path. So path variable and the type is string type. So here I will not put any default value. I'm hitting on save. So what would happen when I'm going to run it? It will ask, hey, which path would you like to take? And if it types A, it will travel through the A path, task and end it. If he is typing B, it will come to the B task and end it. Now the question is how this will understand. Here we have a condition. So click on this condition or the exclusive gateway. Click on this exclusive gateway and here you find conditions and because you have got two paths task and task b it will have it will write automatically something like this edge underscore gateway and then some alpha numeric uh, kind of a, some value uh, auto generated value would appear you see activity q o four five something for you it will be different so it, it will appear like this so initial thing edge underscore gateway would remain common now if you expand the conditions okay you see, this is the first condition. If I expand the second condition, this is the second condition because there are two paths to go. So when it will, it should take task A, here you are going to define. So here I'll give a label called A. For the second one, I'm going to label it as B. Clear? So there are two conditions, two paths, hence A and B, two labels I've given. Now in the condition, what you do, click on this condition expression editor, this one, this symbol. Click on it and then click on expression editor. Here in the insert variable, click on the drop down. You remember for the start event, we have created a variable called path variable. So this is the time in the condition. Once again, what I did, I simply selected the exclusive gateway. Then there were two conditions, right? When I expand the condition, I've given these conditions to name label A and label B I have given. And then for the label A, I'm writing the condition by clicking on this expression editor. And here 
I have created just now I've created a variable called for the start event called path variable. I will simply click on the path variable. So the expression that's going to appear on the screen is something like this variable dot path. After that, what you do put equals to equals to symbol and write a. So what is the meaning of this? If somebody is giving a, then you take this path. It's a condition. If somebody is going to give B, then you take the other path. That also we are going to write. So far, now I am writing for the task A. So variable dot path equals to equals to A. It's the C sharp expression editor. And I'm going to hit on save. So what happened? You see a condition got written. Variable dot path if is equal to A, then you should take this path. Similarly, for the B, what I'm going to do again, hit on this condition expression editor and again click on this insert variable i'm going to select the variable path under the start event and here also i'm going to write similar way equals to equals to in double quote i will say b and hit on save so what i did here if somebody is providing path a in the start event right variable dot path is a variable from the start event then you take this path if somebody is giving B as the path, then you should take this path. Clear? Now what we have done, we have now created a simple process on Maestro and we will see how it executes. This is interesting. So I'm, what I'm going to do, I'm going to hit on this test. Click on the test. And here you see it is asking, hey, what should be the path? It is asking the user what should be the path. Now these inputs can also come from your automation. It can come from any other source also. But for the timing, let's keep it simple and let me type A here. And I'm going to hit on save and test. Now you would see, look at this diagram, what's going to happen in the diagram. Okay, let's wait. You see, start event, five second wait has happened. Then the condition, now the condition is getting, uh, the testing is going on. And now it has taken the A path. Okay, just to show you in full way so if i go back if you see this is how it has appeared okay let me slightly expand so it has taken this path let us run again test and i'm going to save and test okay you see one two three four five five seconds is waiting you see this now it has take it is now condition is getting executed based on the condition based on the value that we have provided it should take the path it has taken the task a path so we'll do one more condition click on back to design mode and again i'm going to hit on test and in this one i'm going to provide the path b and i'm going to hit on save and test okay let's see what's going to happen now it should take this path okay testing is going on see condition has come because I have provided B as the path, you see the B has come. And you see the path is now like this, all green ones. Let's do little more advance. Again, click on back to design mode. Now, what if I want one more task here? Okay, let's say task 1, 2, 3. What I will do, I'll highlight this. And I'm going to put one more task here by hitting on this add task. And I'm going to say, task one two three we can give any name now i have to write a condition because for this i have not written a condition i would select this okay and click on this uh, wrench like an icon which is for the property now here you see one more edge gateway has come it will by default name it like that so what i will do i'll name it as uh, one two three okay and then let's write a condition now here what I'm going to do, expression editor, I'm going to select the path variable and here I'm going to say equals to equals to in double quote one, two, three and I'm going to hit on save. So meaning anybody who is going to provide one, two, three, then the task should come here. After this, you should end the task and write double click on this and say end one, two, three. Okay, done. Now let's run it. Let's run the test. And in the path, I'm going to provide the value 1, 2, 3. And I'm going to hit on save and test. 
Okay, I'm going to hit on seven test. Let's wait for a few seconds. Okay, now you can see, see it is going to task one, two, three. Do you see? You see it's okay. Now task one, two, three got executed. So this is the very simple process we have designed. Let's go back to back design uh, in the maestro. Now, what if I would like to deploy it to the orchestrator? Now to deploy to the orchestrator, what you have to do, hit on the publish button. Okay. And here the change log uh, say this is my first project on Maestro. Okay. And here I'm going to select my personal workspace. Okay. I'm not, I have a couple of other folders. I'll keep on my personal workspace feed and I'm going to hit on publish. You can select any other folder for here. I'm keeping in the workspace feed and I'm going to hit on publish publishing automation published and you see you got a green tick mark now let's go back to orchestrator i'm going to click on this control open the orchestrator all right let's wait so the orchestrator has appeared in this one all i'm going to do i'm going to go to the my workspace folder okay my workspace folder and then i'm going to click on automations so here i deployed a project called my first maestro project that has automatically come in the process i don't have to manually create a process it has automatically come to the my folder okay you see 1.0.0 now only thing you have to do is run it okay so i'm going to click on start job and then it's going to ask all this entry point is this 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 all this and here input path what you would like to provide for the automation to run so i will say one two three input path is one two three and i'm going to hit on start okay while this has started and it's running i'll go to the maestro just to see if any changes happens here okay so it's still running okay Okay, it is successful. So you can see the success has appeared. The Maestro project is running. However, if I go back to the Maestro, if you go to process instances, you would see your process instances are here. If you click on your my first Maestro project, this is where you have an instance management. You have a monitoring. Okay, if it is not showing anything, then select your version. Okay, and then uh, it also tells you how many times it has completed. If I go to the monitoring, if I click on the monitoring, it, it tells me, okay, by this time, I have actually ran three times in the background. So three times it is showing. This is the path it has taken. Because uh, So now if I hit on run, if you would like to hit on run on this, remember to do one small change. Go back to your Maestro project, click on the start event, and here you click on this um, edit. Here, by the, initially when we designed, we have kept it as uh, nothing, right? So give a value A and save it. This is the default value you have given. And then after that, publish it again. Once you have published, the newer version would be available. So that's why you would see my version number here, it says 1.01. I just published it for testing purpose. If you do this and let's say default value have given and I'm going to run it, my expectation was it should show me live while this is running. Okay, now it is usually three times. I'm just waiting here just to give me that live view. Maybe something wrongly I am doing or something wrong on my uh, maestro at the moment. Um, I should, um, that was my expectation that I should be able to see live. It's not appearing, but if I go back to the orchestrator, you see it has run nine seconds back. If I go back to maestro, and check the number you see the number has increased to four you see that means it has run one more time but i i was not able to see that having it live maybe i will experiment a little more to see why the live view is not working however you try it and let me know in the comment section does the live view worked for you if so how did you get it let me know in the comment section